but there's another aspect to it as well it's also a sexual revolution when women are dressed and yet naked eventually you're gonna have the majority of children being born as awlad zina said the prophet alayhi salatu 1400 years ago in arabia he said it a child being born out of wedlock that's no big thing anymore everybody doing it huh marriage that's for the birds we don't bother about marriage anymore huh this is the best of all worlds a sexual revolution which is going to result in the majority of children being born as awladu zina hmm? out of wedlock and more than that and the Muslim youth better listen he said the time will come when people will have sexual intercourse in public like donkeys like donkeys an African student wrote to me from Paris Sheikh we don't have to wait for that it's right here now just outside of my window in my university dormitory I can look out and see them having sexual intercourse like donkeys that's what the student told me an African student in Paris just about maybe a month ago another one told me I was in Tokyo and on a street in Tokyo I saw them like donkeys having sexual intercourse in public in public what do we do we first of all recognize this is the work of the child this is the work of the job and so there's going to be a release of sexual energy in the world as we travel further and further in time people are going to become more and more obsessed with sex hmm? and uh, to the point of sometime being driven to madness and so we see the incidence of rape increasing all over the world rape women being attacked <coughs> we see the incidence of casual sexual relations hmm? women exposing their bodies and Allah has created the woman as the most beautiful thing in the whole world for a man no man will dispute that the most beautiful the most precious thing in the whole world for a man is a woman yes so when women expose themselves they're dressed and yet naked all of this is being exposed to excite men to lure men into sin what do we do when you are a young man you've got that sexual energy in you and as you grow older it becomes weaker and weaker so the older men don't have such a problem as the younger men what do you do the answer is Allah says in the Quran Ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. protect yourselves and protect your families from the fire if you're living in an area in which women are dressed and yet naked you just come out of your door and you're seeing them all over the place like that one day you will look at them and nothing will register in your heart nothing because it's common you become accustomed to it okay that is a sign of decline of faith but if you make a tikaf huh? not for 10 days in the masjid you go to the remote countryside for a whole year and for a whole year you've never seen a woman dressed and yet naked and then after one year you come back to KLCC or to Saibajaya when you see the first woman dressed and yet naked 
something is going to shake inside of you. Something is going to shake inside. Oh my God, what is that? The war is going to end. Huh? Look at that, did you see? That is what the Prophet said will happen. Look, look, look. Then you have Iman still left in you. So if you remain in the midst of all those women who are dressed and yet be naked, tomorrow it will become business as usual. Nothing will register inside of you. And that is a sign of decline of faith. My answer is to get out. Get out and go to the remote countryside where you won't be seeing these things. Hmm? There's a second thing you have to do. And that is <coughs> when a man is brought up as a man and he eats and he drinks the food that Allah has created, the pure food. And when he lives like a man, he rides horses for example, then the virility of a man is such that he needs more than one wife. When you're eating the stuff that you're now eating and drinking the stuff that you're now drinking and traveling in this iron horse where there's no exercise for the groin area, then sometimes one wife is too much. And so back to the village, whether they like it or whether they don't. And there are many who are not going to like the lecture. There are many who are not going to like these words of mine. It doesn't bother me. I preach the deen to please Allah. So we move out to the countryside and we build villages, Muslim villages. And in these villages, we will have not one wife, many wives. Because every woman who comes to that village and says, I want a husband, somebody has to marry her. Somebody has to marry her. So if your wife says, well, I don't want my husband to take another wife, we say, well, why don't you stay in KL? Why don't you stay in Kuala Lumpur? No. Allah has permitted plural marriages and plural marriages has more than one benefit in it it is not that plural marriages helps to provide husbands for so many women who otherwise would not have husbands it is not that plural marriages help to provide maintenance for women and children who otherwise would not be maintained but plural marriages has an impact on the masculinity of the male. Plural marriages has a positive impact, a positive impact on male virility, making you more of a man. And that increase in male virility has an impact on your intellectual life. You become a more versatile thinker. A more versatile scholar. It has an impact on your spiritual life. Opening doors and opening windows which otherwise would not have been open. The plural marriage is not there merely for enjoyment and excitement. Plural marriages have a more profound role to play in society. But I live in a world today in which speaking the words that I have just spoken makes you very unpopular. But Imran Hussein doesn't care for popularity. No. And so for the young man we say, protect, protect yourself from that garbage out there. Look for sisters who are good Muslims. Marry them and have as many children as you can so that in the end Nabi Muhammad والسلام, would be proud of this Ummah now finally before we end why have we concentrated on 